This is my workspace. This is my workspace. This is my workspace. Each of these spaces have items I can quickly access when I need it. When I look for my mouse, I don't go to the backyard. I look here, since the context in which you usually find a mouse is on a desk or a workspace. And this is what Copilot does with the new at workspace participant to give more relevant and faster suggestions or responses to questions. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into how at workspace works behind the scenes, along with plenty of examples. Before diving into at workspace, it's worth discussing the concept of a participant. Participants are domain experts that can answer a query from a user, like yourself, however they want, by fully using AI in the query processing or in a traditional way by forwarding it to a backend service. Participants can also provide the large language model access to domain-specific tools. And with the help of the LLM, the participant may select a tool and define how to invoke it. So for example, if we were to go to chat in VS Code and I enter the at sign, we'll see three participants show up. The first being a terminal, which is where, as it says here, I can ask how to do something within the terminal. For example, how to move a file from one directory to another. And when I hit enter, it'll give me the response how to do that. And the answer is very specific because the context and focus was relevant to terminal questions. If I'm to come up here, I can see the whole command and also just click on this icon right here and it'll shoot it right over to the terminal for me where I could modify it and execute. Another participant is at VS Code. And this participant internally uses tools that give it access to the index of all the settings and commands in VS Code. So now you can ask vague questions like, tell me the name of that thing when VS Code fake opens a file and how to disable it. So I'm being very general in my phrasing here. And because the only context that it's focusing on is related to VS Code, my answer is very specific, and this is exactly what I was looking for. And not only it mentions the preview mode, it describes it, but also tells me how to disable it, just like I asked. So in both these cases, searching for answers will focus on context related to either VS Code or the terminal, so your answer is more accurate and performance isn't wasted searching on unrelated content. But what about context related to your project files? Enter the participant at Workspace. The at Workspace participant knows about your workspace context and can answer questions about it. Internally, the participant is powered by a few different tools. GitHub's Knowledge Graph combined with Semantic Search, Local Code Indexes, and VS Code's Language Services. At Workspace helps with navigation. Because the At Workspace participant knows how to gather context about the code in your workspace, it can help you navigate it by finding relevant classes, files, etc. Imagine that in a project that we have, such as this one right here, we have an Angular application. Imagine that we wanted to know where this auth component is being used. We can hop on over to the chat and use the at workspace participant by simply asking it where is auth component referenced. And I want to carefully explain what's going on behind the scenes here as it pulls up our answers. As you can see, it gives us the answer of where auth component is being referenced and it explains it in these uh, three bullet points, pointing out the app module.ts file, the app routing.module.ts file, and it mentions components or services that imports auth component. But if you look at the very top here, there's a greater than sign that we could drop down and we have links to those files. So what actually happened during this process? There were three core steps. The first step is that all of our project files was indexed by Blackbird. And you can check out this page if you want to learn a little bit more about it. And during this process, App Workspace uses that index as a tool to tap into the knowledge graph. Then it runs a semantic search that returns relevant code snippets and metadata. 
In the second step, another tool is used by at workspace participant, and that is the lexical text search over the local index to find extra code such as local or uncommitted changes and copilot conversation history. And step three is VS Code's language intelligence to add crucial details like function signatures, parameters, etc. And all of these pieces of context are ranked, sliced, and summarized by the at workspace participant and then sent off to the LLM to answer the question. And because it has all of the necessary context, the at workspace participant can answer the kinds of questions that developers are much more likely to ask, like in our example with auth component. Now, the participants that we see in chat can also contribute to what we call slash commands, which are shortcuts to specific functionality provided by the participant. One of the tasks when answering question is to determine the intent, understanding what you want to do. And we can do this with the slash commands just by specifying the command. Let's say, for example, if we chose explain here, and it'll prefix it with at workspace so that the context is our project. And now let's say I was unfamiliar with constructors and just highlighted that and submitted. And let's see what it says. It picks up that I highlighted constructor and now it explains it. And it gives us a definition and explanation that's relevant to our project. So now let's say that there was like a typo in here and I wasn't really sure what was wrong with these uh, lines of code. I can use the slash command for fix. And when I submit it, should recognize it, and give me a solution, which it does. So if I click here, insert add cursor, fixes my typo. So let's see what other slash commands we have available. There's an option for creating a new notebook. So if we want to create a new Jupyter notebook, we not only need to like indicate new notebook here, but we want to specify create a new Jupyter notebook. And when we submit it, it gives us an outline for a Jupyter Notebook. And if I like how that outline looks, I can choose Create Notebook, and it generates this for us in Python. As I scroll up, you can see the different sections, the steps to set up the Jupyter Notebook environment, creating the actual notebook, adding a markdown cell, etc. So I'm not gonna save this, but I do want to come to a close by showing a couple more slash commands. The first is just by choosing Help, Instead of going online to find some random documentation to have some questions answered regarding some of these commands, the help command is pretty detailed here for each of these commands. And you can click on any one of these commands to see an example of how it's used. So I just chose one for Jupyter Notebook and right in the chat box, it shows you a sample of how to use it and what you should expect to get back. And the last thing I'd like to mention is after you've submitted a lot of different commands, because your history is taken into consideration when answering questions, if you want to wipe out your history, you can simply go down and choose clear. And it's as if you're starting from the very beginning. Your project and all will still be there. It's just the history of your chat is what is cleared. And sometimes we just want a fresh start. Thanks for watching this deep dive on at Workspace. I hope you found it useful. And if you got some value out of it, definitely hit the subscribe and like button. And don't forget to watch our other Copilot videos. Catch you in the next one.